Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and it's back to um, back to Factorio Space Exploration for another summary video and then the uh, last session I had I did quite a lot of going around and, and fixing things rather than sort of the rather than going out and doing the big sort of new builds and it, I know I know I've been doing quite a lot of that recently and it feels like I was spending all of my time fixing things rather than building new stuff but I think I've got to a point where I've, I've built up a fair amount of technical debt so it's time to go around and start making things work a bit better. However, some of it has been sort of slightly expansion-y. So if we have a look here on um, Gear Often, this is where I was talking about this in the last episode, where I built up the system here with the with the drills and the uh, pulverizers, and we're loading up as usual, loading up um, trains with the um, with, with the, the the various ores and things. So ooh, and the ships just arrived. That's, that's convenient. Um, so as you can see, these trains are being loaded up with copper, core fragments, and stone, and then the trains are being passed around the system so that they. Um, so they go into the into the spaceship and can be taken off back to Norvis, and this is working more or less perfectly because as you and the timing is perfect as well because as you saw the um, the trains are just both just filled up the ship arrived and now we can now they can go back around and we can load these trains up as well. So if I had significantly more stuff coming through, then maybe I put in another spaceship to carry the carry the uh, the the um, um, the ore frag or back and forth. But in this case, it, 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 there is about the right amount of it, so it's all okay. Now the main thing I've done on this planet is I've actually put in a power supply now. So I've put in one of the beam receivers, and as you can see, this one's still at eight and a half thousand degrees C. So it's actually cooling down relatively quickly. It's using up the, the power um, at quite a rate because that was at ten thousand when I um, fairly recently when I charged it up. So I think I'm going to need to put in another um, beam emitter in Kalida's orbit to just just to, make, to keep this one run, running and ticking over because it's, as I say, it's using up power at quite a rate. We're getting through. Um, a steady 300 megawatts here, which is quite a bit, um, and I suspect it's probably going to be about about fairly well closely matched with the efficiency of a um, of a beam firing out here with a with a one gigawatt input. So we get if we get about 30% throughput on it, then we'll be then we'll be about right. So I need to put one, another one of those in to fire here. This is the standard design. Uh, we've got it feeding into a, a heat exchanger, then a turbine generator, and then the three condenser turbines to use up the hot steam. Um, exactly the same as I've used on, on um, all kinds of other places, and you've seen many times before. And then some buffer water tanks over here to, to deal with that. Now, the problem with gear often is, as you can see, it doesn't have any water at all. So I've had to put in... Um, I've had to put in this this uh, delivery cannon chest here, and this is receiving ice uh, from from frost. So there's a delivery cannon on there that's firing out the ice chunks in in um, in delivery cannon capsules, and then we've got this signal transmitter passing the signal back. And this is basically what I was doing back in series two for all of the resources. But here I thought, well, there's there's no point in shipping entire rocket loads of ice out. I'm ju I'm not going to get through that much of it. It's got th it. It gets through occasion occasionally one or two pieces of ice get used to top the water up, but most of it, it just gets circulated round and round. So this system should be far more efficient than sending an entire rocket over. And so I've decided this this is the, uh, the probably about the right level. There's very little logistics required at this end with this system. It's just nice and simple, and it works. So that's producing all the power I could possibly need. These solar panels are now a bit superfluous, and that's meant I've been able to expand back out to having six of these um, core, uh, core mining drills, and they can all run absolutely flat out because there's so much power available. Um, and then to make sure I've, and to make sure I'm getting as much as possible out of here, I've then got um, I've got my pulverizers here with with their productivity modules in them, so I'm producing a bit more. Um, a bit more of everything than I would no normally would from the amount of stuff that's coming out. And that's possibly part of the reason these trains are filling up so quickly. The other part of that is because there's a lot of copper coming through. As you can see here, this is more than three quarters copper. So because I'm shipping all that out, maybe I should be cooking it up, but then I'd need vulcanizers. It's pr probably not worth doing that over here. So it's, yeah, a lot of the space is taken up by the copper that's being produced. But I think that's probably okay. Then we've got here, we've got, um, so I say, we've got, um, we've got, actually far more pulverizers than we need. I could probably go out and clean, clean some of these out. And I certainly don't need these ones up at the top. So I'll get, I'll get rid of those before I go away. But basically the system here is is working as it should. The other thing I've done on this planet is come out and put the um, meteor defense installations in because it was getting bombarded a bit by um, by meteors. I, ha I had one meteorite land right in the front of my spaceship when it was parked here and wreck the um, wreck the control console, which was very un 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 unhelpful. And I had to come out and, and fix that. So I thought, right, while I'm out here, I'll put this up. Now, this is running in a rather simplistic way. We've got a chest here that is loaded up with um, delivery cannon, uh, sorry, not delivery cannon, uh, meteor defense ammunition. And the system here will just work its way gradually through it, defending as, as much as it can uh, until, until it runs out. So one of the things I need to do, actually, is put a... Um, 
put a transmitter, put a uh, an alarm system on this so I can get alerted when this starts to run out. Uh, so that's something I need to do before I leave, along with ripping up some of the other stuff around here. So, speaking of these things, I found a rather weird problem on this planet. I came back and looked at it because this this was when the um, the meteorite had struck the uh, spaceship, to damaging some of it. So I went out to see what needed to be repaired, and there were a pair of inside the spaceship. There were two. I say trains, they weren't really trains, they were just pairs of wagons, full of stuff, but with nothing else attached, down at the bottom of it. My first thought was, did the meteorite destroy a load of the train stuff? But it turned out, no, that wasn't what happened. What had in fact happened was the um, the spaceship had lifted off from Norvis when the trains were halfway out of the door. And that's not supposed to be able to happen. If we take a look at the um, spaceship, uh, gear off and chunk, here we go, this, this one. Um, so we have a system where <coughs> We want it to for whether there's no no core, core fragments remaining, there, you're on Norvis, and there are two trains available, in which case it should blast off. Now, I think, having discussed this with the people chat on the stream at the time, I think what must have happened is that the um, there's a one t it takes a tick for any signal to get through these, um, these combinators down here. So there was one tick where the trains had left, which meant there were no core fragments in, um, of showing, showing it up. Um, it was on Norvis. But the um, but the trains the, the train number hadn't updated yet because that has to go through these combinators down here. So it takes one. So that updates one tick later, which caused apparently caused the problem. Um, and the, the the ship checks ev once per second, so once every 60 ticks, to see whether everything matches. And so there was one tick where it happened to not match, and that was the, that happened to be when it checked. So the one in, basically all of my spaceships that have these trains on them have a 1 in 60 chance of trying to take off at the wrong time when the trains will get cut in half, which is a bit worrying. So I've found a fix for this, I, I think. So I've linked up all of the gates on the outside of the ship to, to the circuit network as well. And we've got a, a thing up here that's saying if if the gates equal zero, then pass the inputs, then pass everything through on the inputs. Um, but if gates do not equal zero, what happened then? Um, oh, it's a different ship has arrived. That's why. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this one isn't wired up on the gate. So let's let's get back to the ship I was actually trying to look at, shall we? Yeah. So if if the gates are all closed, then then pass through the signals. But if any of the gates are open, don't pass through the signals. So I'm hoping that that means if any of these gates are open, then the ship will not be able to depart. Now, as you saw on the the other ship on Norvis Orbit, this one, this one hasn't been wired up like that. So I need to, I need to go through and get some more of these set up like that in, in the same sort of way. So let's put that in there, and hopefully, maybe maybe the robots will place it before it leaves, and then I can wire it up remotely later. So I need to go through and fix all of these ships up so that'll never happen again. But it was um, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit unfortunate. Uh, someone on chat compared it to being like going up to an airlock and finding just a pair of legs next to it because someone's been unfortunately cut in half, which was accurate but a bit gruesome. <laughs> the other step of this was down on down on Norvis. So down here, because we've now got massive quantities of copper coming out here, as well as the stone and the core fragments. The core fragments are being pumped out on this side. They're going into the um, facility over here that just turns them into all of the, all of the ores I could possibly need. We've now got a flood of copper coming out on this side and, and, and a bit of stone as well and that's getting passed down here and then being filtered out um, by the filtered out over here into the into the appropriate places. So we've now got an, I've now got an extra filter here that will just take the copper copper ore out and put it into this copper ore station here. And so that means we should we should have a lot more copper ore being made available to the system. Now I think over the um, this should be basically work the problem the only concern is now that is that I might need to go out and do this for everything else so we've got um, here we've got coal for example coal isn't too bad because I can go out to I've got a coal planet somewhere in the system um, I think yes here I could go to Greenleaf there's a lot of oh no there isn't there's, there's hardly any bites there that's fine there's, so this is a coal planet so I could do exactly the same sort of thing but with coal on this one uh, the problem is there aren't any iron planets in my um, in my area of influence, um, area area that I can get at. So the nearest, the best I could do, probably do is go out to Kalidas Asteroid Belt 2 here, which is very, very irony. And this one has 
patches of iron where there's 97 mil a 97 million iron patch and there's probably more around as well so this would be quite a good place to go out and put it and start mining iron from and shipping it back in the same sort of way but i can't use core mining which means technically this is non-infinite now the fact that there's 97 million there means it's pretty close to infinite there's there's a there's a lot there it'll last me a long long time but i will eventually have to go out and put in extra mining systems so let's actually that that makes me curious how much iron ore have i got through in my entire game iron ore all time 79 million okay so that that one patch i found out there in space would be sufficient to have done everything i've done up until now so i think it's probably using that one is probably going to be okay <laughs> but then using that using that sort of basic design i'm going to be able to set this up so that i get all the different materials coming in from space now the only slight concern here is that they seem it seems to be having a little bit of trouble cramming all of this copper ore out down this one belt and that's probably oh no the copper is flowing through nicely through here as well so this is actually still running running acceptably um i'm just slightly con have a slight concern that um we'll have more ships arriving here and these will end up getting having more and more and more stone in them but i think looking at them now at a quick glance it seems like it's probably okay We'll see how it goes over time. I'll keep, I'll keep a bit of an eye on it. It depends. It mostly depends on how quickly another ship arrives here, or particularly how, particularly on how quickly another copper ship arrives here. But yes, we'll, we'll monitor that, see how it's going. The other problem I had that I was talking about last time was that one of my um, spaceships ran out of fuel while it was out in deep space. So I had a few ideas for um, for, re for for recovering it. Uh, one was to um, load it up with one was sorry one was to fly out there and put in another system for building up the um, the the, uh, the ion stream that it needs in, in situ. But in the end, I just flew out. I, I managed to sort of crawl it back to um, to the, the first to, to, to Kalidas asteroid belt too because that was the first place it could get to. Parked it there and then flew over. It took an hour and a half to get there. Um, and then flew over with their, with my um, other ship once it once it was there and ready, and just transferred some straight across like this. And that was a nice, easy way of fixing it up. And people have been saying, hey, you need to upgrade to the latest version, then you could have ion canisters. But I think even if I had ion canisters, this would still have been the easiest way to do it. So it probably wouldn't have made any difference there. But yes, they, they there are possible uses for them in other places. So I, I think I think I probably I do need to upgrade to the latest version of space exploration at some point. But well, we'll 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 see how that goes. I keep saying this, and it hasn't happened. In order to try and make sure that doesn't happen again, I've put in an additional docking point here in Norvis orbit for my for this for this spaceship to land in, um, where it where it will get refueled with the um, with, with the uh, what do you call it the ion stream. So that that should now work properly. The only the only slight risk now with this ship is it doesn't have anything to heat the energy beam receiver up again. But that's at a crazy crazy temperature. So I think I don't have to worry about that yet. But it's something I need to remember to keep an eye on when I'm uh, when I'm flitting around the solar system in this ship, or rather flitting around outside the solar system in this ship, because this is the one I use to get to Realm of Shadows, because it's reasonably fast. Cause it's got all of these engines on here, so it only takes about 20 minutes to get there. <laughs> Another thing I've done, I've discovered that with all of these ships I've got flying around now, we're putting massive demands on the rocket fuel supplies. Um, so there's, there's there are a couple of problems with that. The first one was that we weren't getting it brought up to Norvis orbit quickly enough. So I've taken this ship here, the, the Fuley, and I've made a direct copy of it. So now there's two of these ships flying around back and forth. So if I look in, in orbit, we'll probably find, yes, the Fuley 2 is sitting there waiting to dock into Norvis orbit when, once that... Press the right buttons. Once, once this ship has finally finished draining and, and leaves. Now the problem is it's sitting here and it's trying to drain, but this pump is running incredibly slowly. As you can see, it's only doing 100 a second. And that's because of the way the... Um, Factorio's fluid systems work. Once you've got most of your tanks nearly empty like this, this one's trying to suck out, this pump is trying to suck out of a virtually empty tank, as you can see, 1.6 in there, which is being gradually trickled through from all of these other tanks around it. But because they're all down to sort of 2% or less, it's flowing very, very slowly into here. I don't know why it's quite so slow from here, from this one into this one, but it is. It's flowing through very, very slowly, so it takes a very long time to get rid of the last dregs of fuel. In an attempt, there we go, they've just swapped over as you can see. In an attempt to sort of try and improve that a bit, I've tweaked some of the numbers in here. So we're saying now only now leave when you've got to 15,000 instead of the 5,000 it was set to before. And that means you don't have to get quite get the dregs out of all the other tanks, but it's still out of the what, the thousand, um, no, the million that's going into it, we're stopping at 15,000. So we're still getting nearly all the fuel out of it and I, I think I think in order to get the ships flying back and forth a little bit more evenly <coughs> sorry a little bit more frequently and quickly 
it's worth losing that little bit of fuel or not not losing that not even losing that bit of fuel but just not unloading it and transporting it back and forth all the time and treating that as the, as the bottom of the amount it can take maybe it's a bit like an electric car where you never actually discharge the thing completely because it's really really bad for the battery but not quite because that's a weird metaphor um, I've also done that with fueling up the um, the spaceships that come in and land here. I've told them to not worry about being absolutely, completely brimming with fuel and to, to leave when they're sort of 95, 98% full. Because again, you have the same problem when the tanks are virtually full, when they're all full and you're trying to sort of push it out that last little bit. So this has made the, um, the, the ships leave a bit more, a bit more punctually, should we say. So things, think that things are working a bit better because of that. Um, the convenient, happily, the uh, the fuel production system on Asalia is more than capable of keeping up with the two ships flitting backwards and forwards. As you can see, we've got um, we've got full tanks up here. There's enough fuel in here to dump straight into the ship. The only slight problem is the rate that it will do it at, which is why I've put in some ghosts for a second filling point here. Um, however, that's not going to work for, for now. Um, because I haven't been out here to, to put the stuff, the, the parts in place. It, but then it, it doesn't really matter because, as you saw, there was a there was another full ship waiting to land as soon as the other one took off <coughs> from Norbis orbit. So it, we are getting we are bringing fuel up there faster than we're using it. So everything is everything is running fine here for now. So that, yes, generally generally pretty happy with that. The other actually that said, the other problem, the slight problem I've got here, and it seems it doesn't seem to be a problem at the moment. But if, if I ever get sh lots of ships coming in and it gets a bit too crowded around here, then all of the ships that are refueling over here, so this one, this one, any that park here or here or here, they all of these are fueling down the same single pipe. And that is a serious throughput problem because we're trying to pump massive, massive quantities of fuel down a single, single pipe. And Factorio doesn't like putting huge amounts of liquid down a single pipe, which is... So, which is why I've put in these buffer tanks over here, which then, in theory, store pretty much enough fuel to refuel a ship when it lands. And so, we should be mostly okay. But it's still. But if we get a lot of ships in quick succession, it takes a long time for the fuel to get round. It the, the fuel doesn't come round here fast enough sometimes. I'm not quite sure what to do about that. One thing I've considered is perhaps putting in another refueling point up here because that runs off a different pipe off the other side of these tanks. Another possibility would be to run another pipe off here and try and squeeze it through the gap here and pump some more fuel across here, or run a second one down from here and across here and up, again, up, up over here. But all of these things, they feel like sort of slightly dodgy workarounds and I'm not 100% happy with those, those ideas. I think we'll just, ha I think it, at the moment it's okay, but my concern is that as I get more and more spaceships, there's going to be more and more demand on the system and we might start to run into problems. Or maybe I'll just develop antimatter powered spaceships and all the problems will go away because suddenly I won't I'll be able to just not I won't need to worry about this anymore. Maybe that'll just make it really easy. We shall have to wait and see. Okay, there's two more things to talk about. The first one is is down on Norvis. This is this is a quite a minor thing that I should have done a long time ago, but I've gone around to my um, oil mines and I've put in beacons and, well, I, I did put in modules into all the ones I could, but then I ran out of modules. But I'd noticed I was running a bit short of oil for plastic production. So I've put these, all these modules in here. Um, because these have probably all got down to about the slowest they will actually run at, I thought, well, let's just speed module them up fully and just get as much. get Because in Factorio, oil, oil pumps never get down to action, never stop completely. They get slower and slower and slower until they eventually get to a, a minimum speed and then they sit there. So if at that point, once they've got to the minimum speed, there's no harm in just filling them full of speed modules and pumping the stuff out as fast as you possibly can. So that's what I've done here. It's, and so, as you can see, that means that we've now got plenty of oil. That, one, that, that one's completely full. Um, I haven't done this one because I only, only actually did three of them. But we've got quite a lot of oil available now, and I'm sure if I look up here, we'll see that there's yet yeah, there's sufficient oil in the system here, and everything is running happily. So that's 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 working nicely. The other problem I had was a slightly weird one. I ran out of the substrates for data cards up in orbit. So looking at um, Norvis orbit, we have the spaceship comes in, and the little hopper from Norvis lands here, dumps everything out onto this belt. The data cards go down here flow all the way over here and around here and then are made into memory cards and it looks like and it looks like I got through them all again which is a bit concerning how many mem and there aren't very many memory cards up here so it's still a problem and it turns out the reason I was short of them is because my ship down on Norvis had um, 
Uh, no, I do want to. My ship here on Norvis had got to the point where it was like 80% full of data cards and then it had stopped because that was all the demand there was. And so it was sitting there massively full of data cards and just not going anywhere. So I've increased the demand on data cards now to um, a, a bit more, to enough, to enough that it's more than one full starship's worth. So there will always be... So the, the, the ship will always be bringing up data cards basically until they, until they really, really start to back up. <coughs> so that should fix that problem. Um, I think we're basically going to be using... We are currently using data cards as fast as I can make them. Which is a little bit concerning, but it's it's all of the um, it's, I think it's all of the asteroid probes and, and things I've been sending out. So these all take about a thousand data cards each, and they bring back a thousand data cards as well. But there's a massive drain when you start to build them. So here we're building the the probe things. Each one of these takes a thousand blank data cards in order to make it. I don't know why that stopped. Oh, it's because it's full now. Um, and so we've got in here we've got three thousand of data cards locked up in that. We've got another. 4,000 in there. There's probably a few more of those at the other end as well. So all of these add up quite drastically to a point where you just have enormous quantities of data cards. The other thing that I've done here is I've set a, um, a transmitter here that's monitoring how many data cards there are. Oh yeah, sorry. First thing I've done is I finally got in and put in the unloading system. So this is where the data cards go into from the uh, probes that are launched in deep space. They then get poured down here along here into the system and then this is watching this is watching how many there are subtracting 2000 from it and sending the the number and then at the other end we're watching to see if there's more than 2000 in the system uh, that's in uh, realm of shadows and if we've got if we've got to the point where the where's the receiver okay i take it back i haven't actually put in the receiver yet this is something else i need to nip out and do <laughs> um so what I'm going to do is put in a receiver in up here and link that to these belts and say only only allow stuff through if you're getting a signal of less than one. And that means that if there's ever less than 2,000 in, in Norvis orbit, then it will ask for some more. But as long as there's that many, it won't. I might need to tweak these numbers. We'll see how it goes. But that mean, that ensures that we'll, ha we'll never have... Um, we won't be bringing enormous thousands and thousands and thousands of these across and just filling up the chest on, on in Norvis orbit with, to a wasteful level. The other thing I've done to make sure that things don't get don't don't break. Um, so I know I'm aware that with the the satellite launch facility that you have on Norvis that you get at the end of well the end of series one in my case, if you carry on launching satellites after you after the thing is full of um, the its output, then the output just gets lost. I don't know if that's the case for this as well. I do know that the output is full, so I want to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So what I've done is I've turned this inserter off if there's anything on this belt here. So this belt is reading contents. It's passing it okay, it's passing it to here and then to here because this this isn't actually doing anything. It's just a, it's just a pass through point because I couldn't reach one cable all the way from there to there. Um, and then this one is watching to see if everything is zero if the, so, so if the belt is empty, then pass through. And everything is not empty because there's stuff on the belt, so it's not passing them through. So what that means is that this will carry on unloading and then if there's if there's a gap on the belt here, that means this is presumably empty. And it will then launch another rocket, and we'll uh, we'll get some more data cards through. And I think that should be fairly robust, and should 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 work pretty well. My only slight concern is that there's a chance that you might get a gap on here if both of these inserters run out of stuff in their hands at the same time. Um, it it could it can happen. So if it happens on both sides at the same time, then we might launch a rocket even when we don't want to. So this system isn't very robust, but it's the best I could do remotely from from um, on on normal. Actually, no, I, t I take it back. What I could do is I could go, I could do that, and then just read off all of this, and then it has to have, all of this has to be empty before it'll launch a rocket. Yeah, that'll work, because you never get a gap that big when the system's running properly. Okay, so that's that fixed. Right, that is all I have for you today. Um, at some point, I'm going to be coming out here and doing the next step of the processing of the Naquitite um, with the, oh, we've run out of power. That needs looking into, oh, it's going to be because these, this water thing is filled up, and this water thing is filled up. Um, dump. And now that pumps fell. Oh no! Um, oh, that's stupid. So yeah, because the pump is, because the power has stopped, because the because the uh, the water overflowed. Now this pump isn't working, and that means we're not getting the water out of here, so it can't start up again. Oh, actually, actually that's easy enough. If I'd been that, then it, there we go. Okay. 
So this is clearly, as you can tell, not uh, not sustainable. I need to get these water tanks in here and a lot more besides. So I do need to come out into Realm of Shadows and fix that at some point. And then this then this will all be okay again. So yeah, as I was saying, I need to, I want to process this and crush it before it before it leaves because that way I'll be able to get four times as much on each spaceship and that will massively boost the, the uh, throughput. Um, and I think that's I think it's worth it. Technically, that loses me a little bit because I then can't use the um, productivity module version I've got here which is as you can see is getting me an extra 32% um, so that's actually quite a big chunk that I would miss out on but it's, it's sort of a choice between having three times four to three times as many ships because the productivity modules make up for the fourth one um, doing doing the route or having the or doing the processing out there it's a difficult one actually there are, i can see there are very obvious advantages both ways so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to think about this i don't know what i want to do about that but i'll i'll, I'll yeah i shall think about it why is this stopped why has this stopped oh it's run out of that okay that's something else that needs to be fixed i'll look at that next time <laughs> thank you for watching um there'll be another one of these videos next friday of course and there'll be a and i'll be streaming again on tuesday so if you want to come along and watch watch me uh, going through and solving all these problems i've just been talking about then uh, come along then and i'll uh, and you can see, see me fix them all up and, and carry on and hopefully i'll get some deep space science done or maybe i'll just carry on shaving yaks for the whole session we shall see thursday night i should be carrying on with um Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles which is a Minecraft mod that takes in basically all of the other mod packs in the world and adds them all into, into, my, into Minecraft and makes it incredibly complicated. It's basically the angel bobs for my, of Minecraft I suppose. Um, and so that's, that's, that sort of turns to an extent, it turns Minecraft into a bit of a sort of um, almost into a, a Factorio level game once once you advance far enough in it. There's six of us playing, so there's lots of lots of banter and chatter and, and people to go off and do the bits and pieces I don't want to do. So, yeah, come along and join me for that. That's great fun. And we've got all the videos coming out at weekends as well. We've got um, real-life ones on Saturday. I think there's a um, the second half of me making the um, spice rack for my sister's Christmas present coming out on t uh, tomorrow when, you, when this video releases. And then there'll be a GTA video on Sunday of me being chased around the city by pretty much the same bunch of lunatics I'm playing Minecraft with. So that's good fun. It's nice and tense. It can be quite exciting. So don't forget to watch that as well. So yeah, as ever, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.